So let's start by going over here to our layer window and let's click on the plate layer right here. So I'm going to press uh, once. I'm going to click once with my left mouse button in this little window. Turn on the plate layer. So then I'm just going to dolly in and I'll tap the space bar and I'll adjust each of these panels so that I can see um, this plate. Over here I'm going to turn off my grid and I'll probably turn it off over here as well. So I'm going to start with the cylinder. So once again, your polygons, you should be on the polygons tab. If you're not, just click on that. If you don't have your tabs, check over here to bring up your self tabs. I'm going to click once on the button for the cylinder. It's going to drop a cylinder into my scene. And this cylinder doesn't have enough subdivisions. So I'm going to go over here to the channel box. I'll click once on poly cylinder one under inputs. And I'm going to change the subdivisions of this cylinder to 40. And then I'll press return on the keyboard. All right, I'm going to press R for my scale tool. And I'm going to scale this down in the side view. OK. Now I'm going to dolly in in the perspective panel. I will make sure the mouse is over the object. Hold down the right mouse button and go to face. And then I'll press Q for my selection tool. And I'm going to select one of the faces, any of these faces on the side of the cylinder. I'll click once. Then I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard and double click on the face next to it. And what that does is that selects all the faces going around the entire cylinder. So now I'm going to hit the extrude button to extrude these faces. I'll go over here to the top panel and I will um, just tap the space bar and I'm going to extrude out to the next circle and I'll stop. Now I'm going to tap the space bar and then over here in the side panel I'll press W for my move tool and I'm going to move these faces up slightly. Then I'm going to hit extrude again. I'll go over here to the top panel. I'll move the faces out to the next circle in the pattern. I'll tap the space bar. Go over here to the side panel. Press W for your move tool and move these faces up to the top of the pattern. Now I'm going to press extrude one more time. I'm going to use this blue arrow and I'm going to extrude all the way out to the edge of the pattern, the last ring of the circle of all the circles. And I'm actually not going to move this at all. I'll leave this um, the way it is. Okay, so I'm going to press Q for my selection tool. I will hold down the right mouse button and go to object mode and then select the object. From here I'm going to turn off the visibility on the plate ref and then I'm going to turn on the visibility on the objects layer and now I will dolly out. Okay. And I can see where this plate is located. It's located on the grid. So I'll press W and I'm going to move this up so that it sits on the surface of the tabletop. And then I'll just move it over here. And I'll press F in the um, front panel here, and then move this down. Okay, 
So I will take the plate, select it, go to objects. I will right click and go to add selected objects. Now I can click on this V and turn off the visibility. Now I'm going to locate the knife layer and I'll click in this empty box right here to bring up that reference. I'll dolly in in each view here. And once again, um, actually last time we started with the cylinder. So I'm going to start with a cube. So I'll click right here for my cube. It's going to drop it in the center uh, or the origin of my scene. This cube is much too large for the knife. So I'll press R for my scale tool and scale this down. So I'm going to press Q and go up to Window, Rendering Editors, and then Hypershade. So it might be a little bit hard to drag this uh, transparent material onto this cube. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object, then I'll go to the material with my mouse over the material that I would like. I'll hold down the right mouse button and go to assign material to selection. And now if we dolly in, we can see that it is in fact transparent. So, I'll go up to the hypershade right here and close it. Now what I'm going to do is I will just tumble to the back side of this cube. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and go to face. I'm going to select this face right here. And I will hit extrude. Now I'm going to use the blue arrow and I'm going to extrude out. And I'm going to dolly in here. So now what I need to do is I need to scale this face down. So I'm going to click on any of these cubes. So you just click and let go. And then a light blue cube shows up in the center. And I'm going to click and drag on that. You can see that that face is scaling down. So now I'll go over here to the top panel. I'm going to dolly in. So now I can check in the side panel and in the top panel that, that in fact scaled down correctly. If you scale down using just one of these cubes, like for example just the red cube, when I do that everything looks okay in the top panel, but in the side panel you can see that it didn't scale at all. So if you choose to do that you'd also have to scale using this green cube. Since we know we need to scale in both the side and the top panel, it's easiest just to scale from the center right here. Okay, so let's press Q for our selection tool. I'm going to hit the extrude button one more time. And I will extrude this out to the edge of the pattern. Once again, I'll click once on any of these three cubes and let go. Then this light blue cube shows up in the center. I'll click and drag to follow the pattern. OK, I'm going to tumble to the opposite side. Press Q for my selection tool. I'll click on that face. And I'll go up here and hit Extrude. I'm going to move this face to the next vertical line on the pattern. And let me move this panel over. So in this scenario, I don't want to scale from the center. I want to scale over here in the side panel. So I'll click and drag on this green box. And then I'll go over here to the top panel, and I'll click and drag on the red box. I'm going to hit extrude again and move this out just a tiny bit and then scale it down 
to match up with the pattern. Now you might want to dolly in to get a closer look at this. Now I'll start to extrude the blade of the knife. So I will hit the extrude button and move this extrusion all the way out to the next line on the pattern, that horizontal line right there. And then I'll hit extrude one more time and go to the very edge of the pattern. And then I'm going to dolly in here. I will scale in using this red box only and then use the red arrow to move this back slightly. Scale in a tiny bit more. Now, I'm going to select a different section of the knife, so I'll press Q. I'm going to dolly in and select this long, long, narrow rectangle. Now over here in the top panel, I'm going to hit Extrude and I'll use the blue arrow to move out and then I'll use this red box to scale in. I'll hit extrude one more time and use the blue arrow to go out and then use this red box to go in. Tap the spacebar and we have our knife and it is completed. So with my mouse hovering over the object, I will hold the right mouse button down, go over here to object mode, let go. I'm going to press Q for my selection tool and just select the entire object. We no longer need these reference planes, so I will click on this V to turn off the visibility. And then I'm going to turn on the visibility of the objects layer. And I'll hit W for my move tool. And I will hit A to see all objects in the scene here. And I'm going to move the knife up to the top of the table. And then let's just rotate and place the knife. at the side of the plate. I'm just going to press F and dolly in. And I can see right here the knife is actually not sitting on top of the table. So I'll move it over here and then move it down. And now it's resting on top of the table. I'm going to tap the space bar and make sure the knife is selected and then go to the objects layer right here. I'm going to right click and go to add selected objects and then I'll turn off the visibility of everything. So this is a good time to save. Go up to file and then save scene. And then in the next video in this series we will model the fork, the lamp, and the glass.